Okay, hello everybody. Let's jump right into learning about the Aztecs. Uh, some of you guys may have already heard parts of this presentation, so please just skip right ahead to wherever we left off. Okay, so around 700 AD, a wonderful civilization emerged in the Valley of Mexico, today's Mexico City, when uh, a people called the Aztecs found this island in the middle of a lake, and they said, we're going to build a super-duper city here. And they built one of the most fantastic cities in the world. Um, and if you want to get really technical, about 600 years later, a group of warrior people called the Mashika came to this city, took it over, and took charge of it. Um, and the Mashika people and the Aztec people sort of um, mixed and mingled together. And that's why... Um, it's, it's sort of uh, two cultures, the Mexica, the Aztecs. History calls them the Aztecs, but uh, obviously Mexica is sort of the word that the people chose to call the country of Mexico today. Um, and uh, I'll talk about the water around this island. It's really, really cool. Uh, and we see on a map here, this city, Tenochtitlan, this super city in the center of Mexico today, is sort of the whole thing of the Aztec Empire. They are a one super city civilization, and we'll learn all about them. So here's uh, some of the Aztec people. As you can see, a lot of babies, fishermen, warriors with billy clubs, and uh, dressed like animals. So very, very interesting culture. And here's the great city of Tenochtitlan, um, built uh, in the really shallow water of Lake Texacala. And uh, people, you know, got around on these three bridges that led into the city. Uh, also, everybody had a canoe. Um, you know, if this artist's picture was correct, you just see canoes and little boats everywhere going all over. Uh, this was one of the biggest, most fantastic cities in the ancient world. And uh, what does it look like today? Well, it looks like this. Uh, yeah, um, over time, people continually filled in the lake and grew that island more and more and more. And today it's now Mexico City. And uh, as you can see, no lake left and a whole lot of pollution. So uh, what was this pretty awesome looking island city, uh, now it's sort of endless amounts of people. Uh, Mexico City is definitely one of the biggest cities in uh, our hemisphere today. And uh, I don't know, I kind of wish, kind of wish they kept it with that relaxed island canoe vibe. Um, all right, but anyway, let me talk about the water around this island. Uh, it was really, really shallow water, and the Aztec people came up with this really cool way of farming. Um, uh, if any of you guys ever heard of something called hydro farming, where it's uh, you just have a whole bunch of water moving around a plant, and the plant just grows really big and really fast. And uh, the Aztecs sort of figured that out 500 years ago. They would, uh, you know, put these little isolated islands in various places around the, um, in the shallow water, and then just water would be just flowing into these plants all the time, and the plants would grow and grow and grow, and they were the best farms in the world. Um, if you get in a time machine and go to Mexico 500 years ago, uh, Aztecs are practically giving away food for free. Uh, and once a society doesn't have to worry about food, they can definitely focus on a whole bunch of other things. So, Chinampas. Definitely going to be something on your next test. Very, very cool way of growing food. So, let's check out some of these pictures here. Uh, here's a full map of uh, Lake Tex uh, Texacoco. Texacoco. And um, right here, Tenochtitlan, the big city on the island. But then all around it are the Chinampas, and even all over the rest of the shallow parts of the lake. Uh, Chinampas, everywhere you can see. It was the best place to grow food ever. Um, here's some more pictures of Chinampas. People digging up holes in the ground, making these little square islands that are generally pretty small. So that, you know, these water rivers can flow through. And it's just getting the crops super duper hydronated, or uh, hydronated, uh, mm. um, but yeah, getting all kinds of uh, water in there so plants can grow really, really awesomely. Uh, here's another image of Chinampas. 
guys coming around in their canoes, and they kept the islands together by putting in all these wooden stakes and filled them up, and, uh, yep, pretty cool. And uh, there, there sort of are some Chinampa-styled farms today. I think this one's in Brazil. Um, and here's sort of another image of it. As you can see, the water is pretty shallow, but the water just gets right into the roots of a lot of these plants. Um, they also sort of have these little underwater tunnels to let the water flow more freely. And, uh, yep, here are some other people at Chinampa-style farms even today. So, really awesome way of farming. Okay, Aztec culture. Uh, when you have a society that doesn't really have to worry about food, uh, you can focus on doing so many other cool things. Um, and they had a very open-minded culture. Um, from what I, from what historians have put together about the Aztecs, uh, they had a very like open relationship, marriage kind of culture. Um, people were just like, "Yo, let's uh, let's get physically involved with each other all the time." Um, also, a lot of really cool art, uh, a lot of really cool um, studying of the stars. Um, can't really say they did too many technological inventions. Uh, in fact, they never even invented the wheel, which is kind of disappointing. Uh, but uh, as far as just creating really great imagery, um, they did wonderful things about it. Uh, and when people are just getting free food, no theft, no crime. Uh, you can generally get anything you want in that society for very cheap. Not a lot of people were, you know, really, really wealthy. Not a lot of people were really, really poor. People just sort of lived in this really awesome community-style space. Uh, and, uh, you know, I remember reading this thing in college uh, that was done by all these college professors. And it said, uh, what civilization would you prefer to travel back in time to if you had to travel back you know more than 200 years and the consensus was people wanted to go to aztec culture uh free food let's go uh, don't have to worry about crime and being you know murdered and stuff and uh, I'll, I'll tell you more about aztec uh, religion and their warfare styles but i think it was still a very interesting society that we can learn stuff from and maybe adopt some of their ideas today so anyway, here's a bunch of Aztec art, and here are Aztec people living their lives in Tenochtitlan, hanging out, being cool. Okay, so the Aztecs, yeah, I already said this in the last slide, never invented the wheel. Uh, you know, they, they invented these circular toys that involved spinning and motion, and you know, little kids had fun with it, but no Aztec person ever made the concept, hey, these heavy things we're carrying on our back Maybe we can put it on a wheel and roll the heavy thing, and it'll be a lot less work. But I never, I never had that idea. Um, and yeah, so uh, inventing the wheel is a big deal. Another thing, the Aztecs never had any pack animals. Um, you know, I've talked all about these old civilizations that had horses, that had elephants, uh, camels. You know, animals designed to help humans do work, do labor to transport humans. Aztecs had none of that. Uh, everything they did was human movement, human power. Um, also, the Aztecs never got into the Iron Age. They uh, still had really basic metals. Uh, I can't say technology was their prime point. Their society was really focused on art and religion. That was absolutely what they did. Uh, so let's go. All right. Uh, here are some Aztec people moving around. Everything was carried by humans or put on canoes. That's how it got around. Okay, but uh, let's talk about their religion. This is something hopefully some of you are already kind of familiar with, but the uh, Aztecs were incredibly religious, okay? Every single person in their culture was a 100% believer in their religion. And uh, historians are a little bit um, conflicted about how much they did this, but their religion required human sacrifice. Specifically, you had to give a beating heart to the sun god. Uh, some historians say every day. Some say like only during special festivals. Um, I'm pretty confident to teach you guys that every single day someone was killed on the Grand Pyramid at Tenochtitlan 
and their they were you know their hearts got ripped out of their body their beating hearts were presented to the sun and that was it um but during special festivals oh man during festivals they would kill hundreds of people thousands maybe even in a day um and the big concept of their religion was that the sun needed a beating human heart every single day or else the sun wouldn't come up the next morning and i think a lot of you guys are going to be like wow mr brown that's pretty messed up like why didn't they just not sacrifice somebody when every single person in the society is so committed to this religion people actually volunteered to give their hearts to the sun god if your mentality is i can you know save all my friends all my family everyone i've ever known by giving my heart to god um and you know they sort of did have a belief in a kind of heaven uh if you were sacrificed so people were you know they choose me like i'll go uh all the time um and typically did so willingly which is something i i don't think you guys really expected of course it was unbelievably painful of course uh, and the scary thing is, you know, the human body survives for eight seconds. Uh, so uh, you would see them ripping your heart out. It would be so painful. You would see the beating heart outside of your body, which would just be like, oh, my gosh. Um, can't, can't handle that. Um, but, yeah, so you got to give your beating hearts away. And I think maybe you could even make this connection. Why didn't the Aztecs get more technology well, you mean they were killing off their people pretty consistently. Um, and there was all kinds of also other religious practices you had to follow. Uh, and, uh, you know, you might be saying, well, Mr. Brown, like, why is this the number one destination of time travelers when they could get their hearts ripped out? Well, look, it's, you're doing so willingly, okay? You put me in the time machine, I'm going to be kicking it in Mexico City, eat my, or Tenochtitlan, eating my free food, and they'll be like, hey, we need someone to get sacrificed. I'll be like, not me. Choose that guy. So uh, that's sort of how I do it. Okay, so uh, let's uh, check out some of these pictures here. Uh, ripping the heart out. Uh, definitely always had four men and a priest. Got to hold you down. You'd be screaming and crying. It would be the worst feeling ever. Uh, and also getting their hearts ripped out. Yep, killing them. Throwing their dead bodies down. Uh, yep, beaten heart to the sun god. Something you gotta do. Cutting out the hearts. Cutting out the hearts. It happens. Okay. So, not only uh, did the Aztecs have really into religion, they also loved games. Uh, specifically, a game called the Mesoamerican Ball Game. I'm sure it had a different name. And uh, the sad thing is, history has sort of lost the rules of this game. Um, but we have, you know, seen in temples all over Mexico, these rings in these courts. Um, and I think I can confidently teach you it was a game kind of similar to basketball plus soccer with some really interesting middle rules. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a little cartoon clip that's going to hopefully show some of the rules of this game. And um, it was a huge part of their culture. Okay, everybody played this game. Everybody loved this game. It was a big deal. Um, and uh, the winning team, though, actually, if if your uh, team did sort of uh, win the championship uh, World Series of Mesoamerican ball games, well, you were rewarded by being sacrificed to the sun god. And uh, every member of the team got their hearts ripped out and given to the sun. And people were excited about it, you know? It's like it's the biggest honor. And in your head, you're believing, you know, you're going to the highest stages of their version of heaven. So um, you're, you're happy to be sacrificed in certain situations. And uh, it's, it's a concept that it's a little hard for me to understand, but hopefully you guys can get it. So anyway, let's check it out. Mesoamerican ball game. Yep, have to, you'll, you'll see some, a, a better illustration of this in the cartoon. Um, but even the cartoon that you'll watch later, they could have gotten all the rules wrong. Like, the rules are really lost in time. And uh, this is what still exists today in uh, some of the ruins of Aztec cities in Mexico. And, yep, there it is, Mesoamerican ballgame. Kind of cool. 
All right, Aztec warfare, hugely different concept than warfare in almost every other culture I've discussed in my class. Um, very, very interesting. So if uh, the Aztecs had a problem with, say, the uh, Texacala people, who were their neighboring society, what would happen is one of the Aztec generals or kings would come over and talk, you know, first sort of have a, a meeting with the Texacala king. And they'll be like, okay, we have this dispute. We want more of your land. You will give it to us. The Texacala will say, no, we don't want to give you our land. Screw you. We'll fight. Okay, we'll have a fight. When do you want to fight? Um, how about next Thursday? Okay, where? How about in this field between our two civilizations? Okay, how many men should we each bring? Uh, how about a hundred? Okay, cool. See you there. So technically, these two civilizations are at war, but they sort of diplomatically discussed the entire parameters of the war. Um, and, you know, they, their religion was so built into this that it was inappropriate to just kill people unwillingly. Uh, Aztec society was a society virtually without murder um, because the gods dictated the rules about how to live, and if you broke those rules, the sun wouldn't rise the next day and everything would suck. So um, anyway, so what would happen is these uh, two groups of 100 warriors would meet in that predetermined place, and they would all be dressed up in, you know, these fancy uh, animal-style clothes, you know, wearing, like, the pelts of jaguars, uh, dressed up like birds, and every guy would have a wicker shield and a wooden club, okay? That was sort of the traditional fighting styles. And these soldiers would, uh, you know, they would all be lined up, and they'd be like, okay, start the fight! And these soldiers, you know, run up to each other, and they would do this symbol kind of like this, okay? Whew. All right, they would, you know, point, I would point my club at a guy I wanted to fight, and then the other guy could look back at me, and, you know, if he, if he thought I wasn't a challenge, or if he thought I would, you know, kick his butt really easily, he would just, you know, ugh, ugh, I don't want to fight. And then they would just, you know, keep looking around the battlefield until somebody would fight him. Um, but if, you know, let's say, you know, someone does do this symbol at you, well, then you respond to this symbol back at them, and then you're locked in a one-on-one -on -one fight where you're just whacking the other guy with your bat, okay? Um, and ultimately, if you killed the other guy, you would feel terrible, terrible about it. In fact, you would take it upon yourself to remove yourself from the battle and you would contact that guy's family in some way and give your condolences to the family of the guy you killed. You'd give the family special gifts, uh, special prizes, and, you know, also it was believed that if you did die on the battlefield, uh, you would go to, you know, Aztec heaven, but uh, it, it was sort of inappropriate to kill people. In, in a war. How, how funny is that for me to say? It's inappropriate to kill people in their culture's version of war. Uh, instead, what typically was the case is you would be, you know, beating the other guy with this club so much so that he would eventually, you know, get knocked out, go unconscious, you know, be too weak. And the other guy may just, you know, surrender, give like sort of the two finger surrender symbol. And then, you know, you would, you know, you might take a break from fighting, you know, you would be like, okay, I just beat up that guy, and uh, you would help him come to your side of the battlefield. And a lot of the times they did it willingly. They'd be like, oh man, oh, I just got my butt kicked. Okay, I give up. I'll walk over to your side of the battle. And, uh, you know, you take a break, you know, eat some of that free food, drink some drinks, and um, then you'd get right back in it. Uh, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, whatever side won more individual battles, would ultimately be the side who won the war. Uh, so it was a society that had these very, very defined rules of warfare, which is so interesting to me. Uh, and, you know, just in the end, whatever side took more captives, won more of these individual battles, won everything and won the dispute. Uh, and the disputes were always honored. Um, but uh, what would happen, say, if you were one of those captured people? Well, you'd be brought back to Tenochtitlan 
and uh, you would live with the family of the dude who just beat you up. And he would treat you really well. Uh, you'd get, uh, you know, his, his family would, like, cook for you. You'd sleep in his house. You'd, like, talk to him. You'd be allowed to, like, send messages to your family, wherever you were from. You know, you'd be like, yeah, I got captured, but now I'm in town of Chiclan. They're treating me nice. It's cool. And you would uh, hang out with that family until the next big festival. <laughs> and at the next big festival, all the captives would be, you know, honored. And, you know, there would be a big celebration. They'd be marched up to the top of the Grand Temple. And one at a time... <laughs> get their hearts ripped out. And uh, an interesting part of this as well is uh, the, the leftover body of the, the captive guy, you know, this heartless dead corpse would be brought back to the family of the, you know, victorious warrior, and the victorious warrior would cook the dead body and feed it to his family members. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a very, very different culture, you guys. Uh, they don't do this in Mexico anymore today, straight up. But uh, this is, uh, these are the people who, um, you know, it, it, it's their old culture. It's, it's interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Okay, let's check it out. So here is sort of the, the challenging fights that would happen on the Aztec battlefield. A lot of rules, a lot of... Uh, Really, really, uh, you know, how different would the world be today if we had this style of warfare? You know, we could just have, like, the best United States Marine, like, run into ISIS land and, like, just challenge the ISIS guys. And, you know, like, I would, I'd love that. It would be such a simpler way to, to run violence in the world. Um... And then there they are, just going to town with each other. All these guys dressed up in fancy, uh, special styles. Pretty darn cool. And then this is ultimately what happened when you lost. You got your heart ripped out. And you got eaten by other people. So, the purpose of warfare was typically not to just take over other land, to enslave everybody. Um... I think Aztec culture did have slaves, but it was, it was you didn't really like you know whip your slaves and beat up your slaves. Uh, it was it was much more of a relaxed culture, um, and uh, yeah, the purpose of warfare was absolutely to win captives and to just force other cities to either pay you more money or give you more resources. Um, it was not to take over the world. Uh, their religion really dictated against that. Um, and yeah, they just sort of kept building up their one super city of Tenochtitlan, and the Aztecs never really took over anybody else. So it was, uh, they did, you know, win. The, the Aztecs were obviously the best military in uh, the Mexico area, and they got captives and they got tribute from just about every single other city. So they were obviously making a lot of enemies. Uh, you know, these cities didn't like losing every year. Um, and as soon as uh, some Europeans show up, Europeans are going to find a lot of allies to help them take over the biggest city in Mexico. So, yep, here are some more of those Jaguar warriors uh, getting ready to fight, doing their one-on-one -on -one fights. Um, here are some pictures of the fighting as well. And then this guy, he's uh, also in the middle of the fight, getting taken away to be a captive. Okay. And, yep, the super city of Tenochtitlan, I've talked about it a lot during this presentation, I might as well put in your notes, had magnificent temples, markets, four million people. This super island city was double the people of Las Vegas today. Uh, biggest city in the world in the year 1500. Um, very, very impressive. Uh, a really cool culture. I wish I could have seen it with my own eyes. Um, very, very cool. Okay, so uh, once you have all this down, uh, I'll sh got some videos for you guys to see, uh, and uh, that's uh, that's what we're doing today. So, hope you enjoyed learning about the Aztecs. They're definitely a culture I think is super super cool. So, all right, I'll power through these pictures.
Hopefully give you some more time to get this down. <laughs> All right, moving on. So, yep, Ten of Shikhan, the great temples, people in the markets, trading stuff. There's the Grand Pyramid. They ripped out all the all the beating hearts and hanging out in the great city. Really, really cool stuff. All right. Peace out. Until next time.